Well, greetings, sisters. This is Leanne, and as you can see from the title of this message, um, I wanted to take time to talk to you about what to do when you feel like you have an intimidating and unapproachable pastor. Now, I just want to say that uh, none of the pictures in this video are my pastor or anybody else's pastor. I'm sure you can draw the connection here. This is a shepherd and sheep. Um, so that, that said, um, the Lord has really helped me in this area. I have a pastor who has been called intimidating and unapproachable. Um, he, to my shame, I can say he's been called that by me and probably worse. And I've just begun to be aware that um, he's not the only godly man out there um, in, in our, you know, in, in good churches and circles where we are like-minded in doctrine. Uh, there are men who are godly, but who are difficult to communicate with. And I, I have heard things recently and gone through things myself, not just with my current pastor, but serving on the foreign mission field under men who <laughs> I think I also would have described as intimidating and unapproachable at the time that I was with them. But when we take these things to the Lord, he has a way of helping us understand what we wouldn't be able to understand without his help and grace. And so if you are struggling with what you believe to be an intimidating and an unapproachable pastor, um, again, I want to help you with the ways that the Lord has helped me. And I haven't sat down and planned anything fancy to say here. I'm just totally shooting from the hip, as my pastor would say. But um, let me just share how I've been helped. The first thing is that I, I have been able, over the years that I have been a Christian, to make the correlation in in my mind between um, austerity and godliness men who are who appear to be kind of hard and rigid and difficult to communicate with they seem cold or abrasive in how they communicate those are not generally the kind of men who are going to have problems um, with sin because men who are pastors who are like this this is just my experience I'm talking about I know this isn't always true but this is just my experience men who are like that um, are really disciplined they're they're hard on you but they're hard on themselves too um, when I first got saved the very first church I went to was the only church that I could go to because I was a college student, I didn't have a car, and there was one church besides a Catholic church. Uh, there was a congregational church, but at the time I didn't know what congregational meant, so I didn't go to it. Um, but there was a Baptist church within walking distance, and as soon as I hit the campus ground, I was ready to go to church. I, I just felt a hunger and a thirst for the Lord. and. I was clamoring in every direction uh, to have that need met. I just wanted to know him so much. And I started going to this church, which seemed good at the outset. But the church was pastored by a man who was very, um, um, we might say charismatic in the non-religious sense. He was very uh, outgoing and interesting and very um, warm and friendly and I was never afraid to come to him with any questions in fact I remember him picking me up one time when I was really struggling and driving all over the town with me 
um, and hearing my questions and answering my questions. Very quick to give a hug and receive one. Just a really, really nice guy. And I wasn't in that church uh, for six months before he was disciplined out for having an adulterous affair. Now, I'm not saying that every warm, kind guy, that's going to happen to him. What I am saying is that I have found reason, because of that experience, to thank the Lord for the pastor that I have, that, that his personality has uh, kind of sheltered him from that kind of problem, which is good for me as a woman because there's no fear of that. There's no risk of that. I, I, never, I never feel uncomfortable about the way I hear him talking with the woman in the row behind me or uh, how often he hugs women in the church or how long he hugs me. There's never been anything like that because he's so, he's so disciplined. He's so uh, focused on the Lord. And so he is austere, but there's no concern. There's no concern that um, there aren't any of the kinds of concerns with him that I would have about the more outgoing pastor. And there are other concerns that go with that really charming outgoing pastor besides adulterous affairs and, you know, other kinds of immorality. Men who are like that tend to be tempted to please men and so sometimes they become comedians in the pulpit because they want people to like them they want uh, to please people they want to they want to leave feeling like everybody is their friend that can happen too with the really outgoing warm personality not always of course but that's the other thing about the austere pastor he's not prone to pleasing anybody except the Lord. And so he's not afraid to say what ought to be said from the pulpit. He's not afraid to be forthright in evangelism about hell, um, the need for repentance and faith in Christ. There is no, nothing in him that is, uh, that is a stumbling block to the gospel going forth in the various, you know, ways that the gospel goes forth from a pastor. That's another good thing. Um, another thing that comes to mind is that you, you can thank the Lord, and I have thanked the Lord for my pastor as well. Uh, well, because he's not a men pleaser, he's not afraid to discipline sin in the church and that helps keep the church um, pure we often pray for purity in the church and I'd never seen discipline church discipline happen at all until I came to the church where I'm at now and seeing it happen seeing the good results of it having the church cleanse of people who are really uh, causing troubles with their example has left me with a feeling of safety. Now, I'm not in that church right now. I'm on the foreign mission field, but even on the foreign mission field, there's a sense of safety and protection in a man who's willing uh, to discipline clear sin in the church, and the austere man is going to have an easier time doing that than the, the charming, warm man who likes to say what people like to hear. Um, okay, more recently what the Lord has taught me about this, and this I learned from my experience um, in India. I served under a brother there who has, whose example has become very dear to me. Um, it became dear to me while I was there, and it's been dear to me since, just remembering how he handled different things. But he also was austere, and I found myself having hurt feelings all the time and offended all the time and I wish I could go back and do that over again because one of the things uh, that I learned through that experience is that um, sometimes we we look at someone's personality and we call it like sin 
we say that you know this is bad this he's he's not he's a leader but he's not you know, touchy feely and friendly and warm and charismatic in the pulpit and this isn't right i don't like the way i feel around him i don't feel encouraged around him i i don't feel uh loved by him and that isn't consistent with giving um our pastor or other brethren for that matter the benefit of the doubt oftentimes people with personalities that are really different from ours are misunderstood by us and they probably misunderstand us and really the only thing to do in the household of faith is to just clear those things right up so that they don't become a matter of um, division between you, a, a foothold for Satan in your heart because you don't like that he said such and such. Or My thing with austere men is every, every one of them that I know, when I come to them to talk with them about something, they just kind of have a way of like walking away from the conversation before I'm ready to be done. And I always feel like left standing there feeling like an idiot. <laughs> and the Lord just brought me to see they're not uh, being offensive. They're not being rude. They're just being themselves, and they don't even know, not a clue, how that made me feel. And but if I if I give them the benefit of the doubt, then I can I can take that for granted. He did not do that to make me feel like an idiot. It's just operating from her his personality. He's thinking the conversation's done, and he's ready to move on. And and saying some comfortable final words is not necessary in his mind, and that's fine. Uh, so personality is not sin. My pastor is not sinful because he's his his personality makes him feel kind of unapproachable, any more than my chit chattiness um, is sinful because God says for women to be quiet. There's a time and a place for me to be quiet. And I need to exercise that discipline, even as there's a time and a place for even the austere pastor to put his arm around someone. I know my pastor has done that. He's done it to me, and I've seen him do it to others, that when the time called for it, there was warmth ready to be shared. And so we don't want to make the mistake of calling personality sin when it's not. Sometimes it is, but when it's not, we shouldn't. Um, the other thing, and perhaps the most important and influential in my life, I hope I didn't say that already, because this is it, this is the real thing. Um, I was reading in Luke 19, in the parable of the Minas, I'm reading from a New King James Version. Um, you know this parable, when the, the landowner leaves and he gives to three of the servants some Minas, expecting them to do something with the Minas, and he comes back and asks them all what they did, and Two of them had doubled it, and one of them hadn't. And he came to the master, saying, Master, here is your mina, which I have kept put away in a handkerchief, for I feared you because you are an austere man. And, um, and the master later says, Out of your own mouth I will judge you, you wicked servant. You knew that I was an austere man. And that stuck with me because this person in the parable that Jesus is sharing is a description of himself. The master is him. And, and he's coming back. He's left, and he's given us work to do, and he's coming back. And he's going to expect that his people did something with the gifts that he gave them. And... So basically, in this parable, he referred to the character representing himself as being austere. Some, some translations say hard, and that's exactly what an austere man is. Hard, rigid, comes off kind of cold. If you have an austere pastor, then you have a pastor who's more like Christ than, than the warm, friendly, easy-to-be-around man. What's more, um, if your pastor is unapproachable in your mind, if he's intimidating, then what you're basically saying is that um, you're afraid of him. You're afraid to approach him. 
Again, we're told in the scriptures in Mark chapter 9, when Jesus predicts his death and resurrection, it says that his disciples didn't understand this saying and were afraid to ask him. If, if you have a pastor whose who's, um, countenance is fearful to you, so much so that if you don't understand something he says, you're kind of nervous about asking him, then you have a pastor who's a lot like Christ. That isn't something to be despised. I think because we live in a culture that's very warm and friendly, um, especially um, in the uh, sphere of Christianity, we live in a day and age where we try not to offend people. We try to be as warm and friendly, and it's all about numbers and getting people in the church, and you're not going to succeed if you're cold and hard, if you're a Jonathan Edwards kind of guy. But hey, <laughs> read about Jonathan Edwards. He accomplished more for the kingdom of God in his generation than maybe any other man alive in his time. Men like that are men like Christ, and it's amazing what God works through him. We do not have a right to pastors who are friendly and warm and saying everything we want to hear. If you've got a pastor who's intimidating and unapproachable, keep in mind that you have a reason from the scriptures to think you've got a pastor who, for that very reason, is like your savior. One last thing I will say very quickly is that I know my pastor well enough. Uh, he sent his daughter to me in India to help me there in my home. And um, I've been in his home. I've sat at his table. And one thing I know about him is that um, his demeanor in his home is very different from his demeanor in church. He's definitely more comfortable there. His communication with his children in the house is different. And so keeping in mind that Christ is described as being austere or hard by himself in that parable that his disciples were afraid to ask him questions, we can know that the God that we serve is also hard. He is austere, but at the same time, full of love and grace and mercy. And he gives that, he extends that out to us. And my pastor is the same way. I don't always understand how he shows love, but I know he shows it in the best way that he can. I've been the beneficiary beneficiary of it. I know it's there. And the same is true of our Heavenly Father. He has shown us love through Christ. And if we have repented of our sins and put our faith in Christ for salvation and his righteousness and his sacrifice, then we have been welcomed into his home and we're a part of his family. And that that austerity that you might see in your pastor at church that you know is a trait of your Heavenly Father um, takes on a warmth and a friendliness that's very much like the warmth and the friendliness I have seen between my pastor and his children. And so be encouraged if your pastor is intimidating and unapproachable because there are reasons to be encouraged. Be thankful. Look at, uh, if you have time, take a look at First Thessalonians 5, verses 12 thir through 13. In my translation, it says, We urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. And so this is what you ought to be doing with your pastor recognizing him, esteeming him very highly in love because he's working hard and his work is for your benefit. Um, if you look at Hebrews chapter 13, um, let's see, verse 17, it says, Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief for that would be unprofitable for you. Now, I'm saying this to other women because I know the propensity of women to say things, unflattering, unhelpful things behind the backs of their pastors about 
how cold they are, how unapproachable how they are, how intimidating they are. Well, I came to him, and this is what he did, and this is what he said, and I cried three days, and you say things like that, and then it's no longer a joy, <laughs> but a grief for them to have to watch over you because of the way you're acting, the way you're hurting them. Be submissive, be obedient, understand that this man who doesn't always act the way that you wish he would, or th maybe you think he ought to, he's watching over your soul. So recognizing, recognize him, esteem him highly, show him love, and let that love begin with binding up your lips from ever saying anything about him that would hurt him or his ministry, but rather open your lips to praise about him that which is praiseworthy and good and extend your hands to help him in any way that you can. Because at the end of the day, there is no perfect pastor and there is no perfect church. So it would be best for you to serve and love the one that you have to fill in whatever gaps you see in the church with your own self rather than complaining about them and making the problem worse. All right, well, that's it for this message. It's long. I hope I can get it through here. I can hope I can get it uploaded. I love you, and if you have any questions about this, please feel free to ask.